So the iPhone 10 plus 2020 equals value. Should you buy the iPhone 10 here now that it's 2020? Let's discuss that quickly. Now, first of all, the last time I covered this topic was I think a whole year ago. Should you buy the iPhone 10 in 2019? And I recommended it then, but it's 2020. Has things changed? Yeah, 5G is coming to the iPhone this year. The iPhone 10 key specifications, a 5.8 inch OLED display we have a dual 12 megapixel camera here on the rear of the iphone 10 and we also do have three gigabytes of ram and an apple a11 bionic chipset with a 2716 milliamp hour battery so should you buy the iphone 10 when it comes to its body so we're talking about a gorilla glass front and a gorilla glass rear on this device and we're also talking about 174 grams of weight so it's not that weighty but it does have a dense feel due to the stainless steel structure and it just kind of has like this little you know premium feel to it it's not quite as heavy as like the 11 pro or the iphone 10s even but still has a nice dense feel to it overall now it is ip rated at ip67 so you don't have to worry too much about dust and water in this guy and it does have support for apple pay although you can't really access the nfc as an, a solo option uh, the iphone 10 in terms of the body is a definite buy right now just because it still feels more premium than like probably i would say my 70 percent of the other phones on the market right now so yeah it's definitely uh up there in the premium feel in terms of the body and it's held on very well especially this back i don't find it to crack very easily although i have seen some people with cracked backs it hasn't cracked too easily for me i've been keeping it in a case the case is just off for the video the stainless steel though on the iphone 10 can scratch quite easily and scuff up but i don't really mind it because the scuffs don't look that bad they actually kind of look like you know it's just you just use it just some normal wear and tear so it doesn't really look that bad so overall yeah the body does hold on very strong for the 10 and i think in 2020 it's a still a good option when it comes to that now, if you want to buy the iPhone 10 in terms of display in 2020, this is still an excellent option. It gets up to 625 nits of brightness. It's a Samsung panel, so very sharp here. Although there is a notch on this panel, that's kind of gotten used to by now, and there's so many phones with holes and notches and all kinds of stuff interrupting the display, so I don't think this is as big of a concern as it was back in 2017. But if you are still looking for that, you might want to take a look at like the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus or Galaxy Note 9. If you're looking for a yesteryear phone without a notch now when it comes to the text of that display super duper sharp still it is a super retina display so really good resolution on this panel and um, while it's not the xdr panel of the newer 11 pros it doesn't get quite as bright as those it's not really that big of a deal. You're going to absolutely love this panel, especially considering this phone is going for, you know, $400 or so. You're not going to get an OLED screen this good on any other iPhone at this price point. You know, you're going to probably find 10 R's in that price point, but you're getting LCD panels. So yeah, with a density of 458 PPI, you don't have to worry at all about this sharpness or the panel being a little bit concerned about that. It's very good. And it still has that 120 Hertz touch sensing. So you'll notice when I am scrolling through the phone it's still got that really smooth feel to it even though it's not a 90 hertz display and it doesn't refresh at a pro motion rate but it still has a super smooth feel due to the operation of ios and there's plenty you can do with this display such as you know put on bold text you can do like different text sizes of course you got true tone but if we go over here you can see if we just put display there's a lot of other things you can do especially in this accessibility functionality where you can increase the contrast of this panel you can differentiate without color smart invert classic invert there's color filters you can reduce the white point to get a dimmer screen at nighttime and a lot of times people think why is my display so bright that might be the problem right there of course auto brightness that's standard across smartphones but i gotta say overall you're getting a great package hdr 10 support video looks excellent on here 3d touch on here so what that means is that you have a very fast punch in to the shortcuts even though the iphone 11 pro is not as fast as the 3d touch here for iphone 10 so all around a1 display if there was any reason to buy the iphone 10 over say 10r that's one of the reasons and now let's discuss software you're still getting updates to ios actually i didn't even put this one on 13.3 yet but 14 is going to come to this phone and you do have dark mode on this phone as well just like the newer iphone so the software i don't really tell any difference between this and a brand new iphone 11 pro however what i will say is that the camera software is a little bit different but that's because the 
camera on the iPhone 11 Pro has a triple lens. Got a little candy cane right here. So of course it's going to be a little bit different. But overall, using this phone blindfolded, Holding it in your hand feels just like a 10s. feels pretty similar to an 11 Pro. But if you didn't know, like if you just seen somebody from a distance using this and they weren't rocking out the iPhone 10 wallpaper, you wouldn't know that this is an iPhone 10. The software is exactly identical. And that's great. That's always been one of the great things about iPhone. You have a consistent experience day to day. So buying an iPhone 10 in 2020 in terms of software risk, not bad. And I think you got at least two to three more years on this phone right here. And in 2020, that brings me on the performance. If you haven't been to the channel before, we've done tons of speed tests on the iPhone 10, and I can't remember a time where it really lost that bad, even if it did lose. It wasn't by a lot. The iPhone 10 has always been a boss performer with the A11 Bionic chipset. The only thing I would be concerned about is Apple going to throttle this phone. That's the only thing I would be a little bit concerned about because they have been known to do that in the past. If they start throttling the phone, it will feel slower. But as of right now, I'm not seeing a big gap in performance between this and any of the newer iPhones right now. And that leads me on to the cameras for iPhone 10. Should you buy it in 2020 when it comes to the cameras? Well, guys, this is no iPhone 11. It doesn't have that ultra wide fun camera, but what it does have is still for this price point, very good cameras. You have a telephoto on here and video resolution can go all the way up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Now, why is that even important? That's important because you're getting higher quality resolution video than even a phone like a Google Pixel 4 XL, which is a brand new phone right now, or even some other devices don't still have this feature 4K 60. But at the same time, you know, like the video quality on iPhone has been good for a while and you're not going to get a bad performance whatsoever. The portrait modes have been greatly improved. My finger was covered. The portrait modes have been greatly improved here for the iPhone since the iPhone 10, but it's still usable here. So I would say when it comes to the camera performance, if you're looking for something with usable footage, very good video, the iPhone 10 at this price point is still a great bargain. 10R is a better camera though. So if camera is more important than display, I would strongly consider you check out the 10R over this one. So what about performance in the audio? So I'm gonna watch the most latest video here and raise the volume up. Elite 2019 mid-ranger by Samsung updating on the A50. Awesome screen, awesome camera. Is yes, this is a plastic design, kind of reminds you of the older Samsung with plastic phones. But what so you can see audio is still coming out the other side. Camera, pretty interesting. Audio is still coming out over here. Now, I will say one thing. The newer iPhones did get a little bit better audio, a little bit fuller at the high end, and a little bit louder for especially the 11 Pros. But it's not like this is a bad speaker experience. Not at all. Stereo speakers on here is always a great thing. They've been around since the iPhone 7. And you're not going to be disappointed. With Bluetooth 5.0 on board, everything connects super fast. It doesn't have Wi-Fi 6 or nothing like that. But this phone still has very good, fast connections and great audio performance. Just no headphone jack. That's something that's been gone on iPhone, but you can use AirPods, stuff like that. It's a solid performer in audio. But what about battery life? Now I did an all day battery test on the iPhone 10. I'll leave a link to that down below, but this phone can make it through the day. Now, does it finish with the same longevity as say the iPhone 11 Pro, for example? Absolutely not. Not even close to the 10R. But this phone is a day phone for most, you know, average people who are out there just doing, going to school, going to work, doing regular things with their life, and they're just not on their phone constantly. I don't mean like constantly like texting and Instagram, stuff like that. I mean like constantly like browsing all day, watching videos all freaking day. You might kill the battery a lot faster then, or taking tons of photos or using this as your main camera, bring a battery pack. But... Just for a regular usage day to day, the iPhone 10 still gets through the day. My screen time was around five hours, greatly improved on the newer phones. But I just gotta say, should you buy this in terms of battery life in 2020? The answer to that question is probably not. There's better options if you care solely about battery life, but it does have wireless charging and it does have fast charging capabilities if you buy a separate faster charger. So you can get iPhone 10 in 64 gigabyte models or even 256 gigabyte models. And the storage on here pretty, uh, fast storage. Is it worth it here in 2020? Let's just conclude right here. Good cameras, not the best. Great build quality, great body, super premium feeling, great display, 
solid battery life, not amazing, but it's okay. It's good enough to not dissuade you from buying this phone. Face ID is still very welcome here. You have face ID scanning on this phone, wireless charging. I mean, 3D touch on here. There's a lot of features on the iPhone 10 that still make it a worthy competitive option, especially if you're looking for a yes to your phone in that 400 price range. Yeah, you can talk about Android phones like the OnePlus. You can talk, but people people want Apple. They want the iOS experience and they want it on the low. Yeah, you can say, wait till the SE2, wait for the iPhone 9. But if that rumor comes true and it looks just like the iPhone 8, this is still gonna be a compelling option for people who want a different design. So my question to you is, are you going to pick up an iPhone 10 in 2020? If you haven't already upgraded from this phone, let us know that down below. But if you have upgraded from this phone, let us know your experience, what you thought about it. Maybe you loved it, you just got rid of it because a new phone came out. Let us know your thoughts on the iPhone 10 for people who are still looking to get one in 2020. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well. I will catch you all in the next episode and peace.